The worker health and safety concerns that we have on our reservation, the Navajo Nation, are um, education, training, and implementing those as programs, and then also come developing and implementing programs of occupational safety and health. The Navajo OSHA program uh, was established back in the late 80s, or actually it wasn't established, it was talked about and there was a need for it. There were a lot of accidents and incidents and injuries and a couple of fatalities that occurred. There was a safety committee that was developed and it was developed by a few people from risk management and other various offices. There were a task force team and they developed the Navajo Occupational Safety and Health Act of 2000, and that developed the uh, Navajo OSHA. So what they did was they adopted and promulgated the OSHA Act of 1970, woven that into their OSHA Act of 2000. And that's when they promulgated, they promulgated the standards, which was the 1910 and the 1926. With our program, what we're doing is we're Educating. First step is educating. Um, we're advertising our information through word of mouth, also through our community. Not only that, we send out mass emails and utilize our Navajo Nation website to advertise our trainings. Every week we have three trainings starting on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. What we're trying to do is we're trying to show them another way of thinking. We want to show them that they can eliminate, they can substitute, they can also utilize their uh, engineering controls as well as their administrative and letting them know that the first step for personal protective equipment is actually not the first step. It's going to be the, our last step when we uh, look at occupational and safety hazards. Going through some of our training we've learned that it comes from the top. The manager has to take that responsibility, the accountability for their staff. And that's one of the things that we're looking at is uh, educating on tier levels and creating a curriculum. So if we create a curriculum, we can develop plans and start implementing. And not every space or not every area or every office or program entity or a chapter or local governance is all going to be the same because they, they are going to face different hazards and different situations. For us, we also have to look out for tradition and culture. We look at cattle, cattle herding, um, even writing. Uh, when it comes to our council delegates, the tradition and culture is implemented there where our leaders, our legislative leaders, they come in on horseback so that would be one of the concerns too, is how is the terrain? Is there, are there any uh, potentials for a, a hazard or a fall? Coming to the conference, I didn't know what to expect. I was talking with one of the young ladies as I was coming into the building that it was different. Here you're interacting with your peers and with other tribes, talking over uh, and discussing different issues that each tribe does have and it, it, they're all similar. So that talking with the peers and getting information and then familiarizing yourself with it, that I think that is very vital key to continuing gathering together as, as a group with NIOSH and all the uh, tribal communities.